under the disguise of modern Peru, like an iceberg's body resting underneath the water, an ancient culture is thriving. A diverse shamanic tradition that began long before recorded history continues to provide healing and a sense of direction to those who choose to listen. Ayahuasca, the vine of the dead from the Amazon basin, and Wachuma, the cactus of life from the Andes, are two engines that propel ancient history across time and space, delivering healing and guidance to those who seek it. Just as an airplane requires a cabin and crew and a pilot, so do these plant teachers. A plant cannot serve itself. One of the servants of the Wachuma cactus is Sergei Baranov. When you first meet Sergei, you don't see a stereotypical image of a shaman. There's no headdress, no outfit, you just see a person that looks like you. His extraordinary path is eloquently captured in his first book, Path, Seeking Truth in a World of Lies, which continues to inspire people across the globe to come to Peru and visit the Wachuma Wasi, his healing center in the Sacred Valley. I kept searching for my path. I knew that shamanic experience, that's what I actually want. And I found people in Peru, and uh, that was uh, Spirit Quest, uh, founded by Howard Lawler, an American who lived in, in Peru for many years. And I felt the uh, truth in him when we talked. So I decided to go see him and work with Ayahuasca and Wachuma for five weeks. And it was a life-changing experience, really. You know, when I had uh, Wachuma first time, I, I felt like I knew this medicine. I felt like it was me. So, I dedicated myself to this plan. Among the many initiations that Sergi has had with different shamans and plant medicines, the most significant was during a peyote ceremony with the Huichol Indians of Mexico. At the peak of it, he was stung by scorpions several times and spent three days on the edge of death. It was a pivotal point on his path. Sergi believes that nature is the cure for our personal and cultural madness a cure that is being systematically destroyed by corporate greed and corruption. Nature, he says, is what makes planet Earth what it is, a precious gem floating in the void of space, abundant of life. There is no life on the moon, only dust, rocks, a few footprints, and an American flag. Although probabilities suggest that life on other planets may exist, even if we were to find it, how would we get there?
What is the point in investing so much of our money and resources into researching for microbial life on other planets when there is already a fully developed, diverse and intelligent life currently existing on Earth? Life that is threatened by the ecological crises that we have collectively created. If we continue to ignore the signals that the Earth is giving us, we may well find ourselves in the middle of a worldwide catastrophe, with many flags poking out of the ruins of what was once human civilization. The future that we move into is a consequence of all the actions that we have made and will continue to make right now. Technology is moving us further and further away from nature as we find ourselves more dependent on it to function in our daily lives. How many of us would know how to live if the electricity shut off, or if we suddenly ran out of oil? We urgently need to re-establish a connection with nature and get back in touch with the planet we live on. We need to come to our senses and realize that there is a better way to live our lives, one that is fulfilling and brings contentment. If we continue to feed corporate greed and political ignorance, we may well be moving towards extinction. One effective way of reconnecting with nature is through working with plant medicine. We call it medicine because it allows us to heal our bodies and minds. It filters out belief systems and ideologies that are not serving us or the planet. It heightens our awareness of the impact that our actions have on the environment and on those around us. It reminds us of how strong and capable we are as human beings to create change in our personal lives and inspire people around us to do the same in such an intimate way that protecting and preserving it becomes a priority. In the Western world, the concept of ceremony has seemingly lost the magic and power from which it sprang. One place we can observe this idea, outside the world of plant medicine, is in a wedding ceremony. To watch two people come together in love is a very beautiful, touching thing. Although the celebration that follows this is essential, it seems the peace fades away as the party begins with loud music and alcohol, which often leads to violence. At the Wachumawasi, we maintain this peace throughout your stay while you marry the spirit of life and beauty. You can gain much more spiritual growth here in much less time compared to investing your life in rigid disciplines. Life is supposed to be a journey of joy, and true spirituality is here to assist that. Sergi prepares his own medicine. A medicine man must prepare his own brew. This is done openly, and those who are staying at the Wachumawasi are invited to join the preparation if more medicine needs to be made at the time. The cooking process is very important. This is where I fuse myself with the medicine. I visualize the healing that people receive when they come here. I see their smiles, their brightness, their clarity and understanding.
it's an intimate process. This is when you really make the connection with the spirit of the plant. It takes many days to prepare it and this is where I stay here and uh, just concentrate and contemplate and bring all my experience into the process of cooking. The ceremony starts around Sergei's altar. He lights a tobacco cigarette and shakes a rattle to bring focus and stillness into the space, followed by the calming sound of Tibetan bells. Then he pours the medicine and passes a cup to each individual in a clockwise motion, following the flow of time. It is a very personal moment when a cup first finds its way into your hands. You will look back and wonder, was it you that took the medicine or the medicine that took you? It will forever be a mystery and that is a beautiful thing. This is precisely why entire civilizations have grown out of their relationship to these medicines. Ancient cultures recognized the natural power these plants have to heal and expand consciousness. There's a lot that can be said about the ceremony. The point is that we use it to create a focus that then leads us through our journey on that particular day, throughout which Sergei is available to offer guidance, usually in the form of spontaneous conversation. We will now ask some guests who are staying with us about their experience with the Wachuma medicine so far. Wachuma is a really wise plant and it completely changed my life. It deconstructs you and it uh, pairs you down to your, your fundamental elemental self. It brings me closer to me and my family, things that I've been neglecting in my life. Wachuma is uh, pure magic that um, allow me to finally live life. Wachuma brought me back to life. I've been searching for this medicine all my life and I've been trying all kinds of other medicine to try to, to see the inside of me. Wachima, for me, has brought me right back down to earth. I've struggled with drug addiction for my whole adult life and coming to Wachima, it's saved my life. It's usually I took drugs to escape myself. With Wachima, there is no escape from yourself. It's just you and yourself and going inside. It's been very, very profound, very strong, yet gentle at the same time. And uh, for me, it's been an agent to connect my divinity to all that is and source. And it makes everything so much more beautiful that you just feel this tremendous gratitude our society has us kind of functioning like robots, where we're just oblivious to everything around us. But Wachuma helps you to see in a way where you take time to notice things that you would never notice. Right now in this moment in our existence on Earth, I feel it's all the more important that Wachuma joins with the human spirit to connect to the moment and to nature. It allows you to become the core of who you are. I was on a long spiritual path of five years of doing all kinds of things. And it isn't until I, I found Wachuma that I could really make significant changes because it makes you understand yourself on a deeper level. It gives clarity. And I believe by understanding things deeper, um, you can already change them. I'm so happy I spent a month here. It's been uh, a life-changing thing for me. Wachuma kind of helped put all the pieces together of the different things that I was getting out of the plant medicine. It's a guide. It's a powerful guide that allows you to, to go through the difficulties that you have experienced 
and uh, to grow within them. Every time I'm, um, I'm having a ceremony, I put an intention and somehow everything works out the way and I get the answers I need. And I feel it's giving me what I need to get at that moment. It's not giving me more than I can handle. So that's why you need like more ceremonies to go deeper until you get to that point that you're really in your subconscious where you were not ready for in the beginning. It strips you. You're naked. You're a baby. But you've also had a life and so you, you can examine it in an honest, loving way. It shows you a path in uh, an honest an honest look at your life. I could feel it in my heart. It just helps you think about life. I just love it. You know, I would I would recommend this medicine to anyone on the planet. Where I came from, it's like a lot of war, a lot of hatred, a lot of stress. So you look in the eyes of the people and you see fire. You don't see love. So I wish I can take this medicine and like spread it like rain on everybody to understand the real meaning of life. Machima is very connecting to everything that's around. It's allowed me to slow down to the speed of nature um, and live a life from love, come back into my heart space. Machima is heart medicine. You find a lot of compassion and empathy for yourself and for others and uh, in that compassion you find forgiveness and in that space of forgiveness you find you find love and love is what uh, heals it's a really intense uh, healing that can change your life forever 20 years of therapy are the same like three sessions of wachuma like the first time i heard about this medicine i remember saying I've been looking for this my whole entire life. And, and now I'm here, and I love it. And I know it loves me. Over the last nine years, Sergei and his wife have turned a cornfield into a beautiful space where guests from around the world can feel at home, find healing, meaning, and transform their lives. The Wachumawasi, which means the cactus house in Quechua, the native language of the Incas, is a beautiful, comfortable place open throughout the year. Many find here what it is they are looking for, and some even find more. Sergei calls his retreat center the Cactus House, not only because many cacti grow in the garden and this place is dedicated to the service of Wachuma, but also because every brick in the main house has been dipped in his medicine. My experience in Wachuma was the, is encountering new friends, a new family, and uh, feeling completely respected, honored as a, as a human being. And uh, it's a beautiful communion, and uh, it's a completely safe environment for experiencing this beautiful medicine. It's, for me, it's the best to come home after the ceremony and to have a fireplace and yeah, to share a meal with the others staying in the house and sharing our experience at the fire. So I think this is a very important part of the ceremony. You're kind of coming home in Wachumawasi. You feel uh, very welcome. Uh, it's, it's, it's laughter, it's wisdom, it's camaraderie. It's, um, it's a fantastic feeling. It's a kind of like a womb, you know? It's been very pleasant, it still is. I really like it, I have a nice room. I get to look out the window and see the mountains. Um, everyone here has such a peaceful, positive energy. So it's almost like being at home, but a little more peaceful, because I come from the city. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great location, and it's easy to get to the markets and explore on the days off, and have a lot of fun hiking and all that. So I've been, been able to you know, get in a lot better shape. You know the. Uh, the Wachimawasi is at 10,000 feet, so, you know, it's, it's a nice challenge. During my all staying, I have been feeling very supported and uh, loved. And, um, and this is what is for me. For me, Wachimawasi is family. It's a great feeling. It's a warm feeling. And it just, it's beautiful to actually be amongst people like yourself that is seeking to make their life better 
you know, through this plant medicine. And I just love being here. I mean, this is like my home. On the days in between ceremony, guests at the Wachuma Wasi have the opportunity to explore the Sacred Valley, Machu Picchu, and Cusco, which offers many ancient historical sites, museums, markets, and restaurants. Now we would like to invite Sergi to share his perspective on some important questions that were raised during the making of this film. for many years and I was seeking for a method that could help me to connect to myself and experience reality the way I experienced that when I was a kid purely deeply magically and I saw lots of wisdom in Eastern traditions but I also felt that these are mostly words and words can lead to the experience but the experience is the ultimate teacher. So there are a lot of good words but it's just words. So I knew that I need shamanic experience which is the key for understanding, is the key for seeing reality as it is. And I had psychedelic experiences before so I already knew that higher states of consciousness are real and what was missing is the guidance is the sort of framework to put it in so this is when I start thinking that combining the energy of the plants and the wisdom of these ancient teachers with a certain philosophical frame can be very beneficial for us to understand ourselves and the world we live in. So essentially this is what I do and this is the path I share. I encourage people to read and study and filter that through shamanic experience. This medicine is the medicine of truth and it has the power to make you rethink your ways which is a good thing if you are a spiritual seeker because you don't want to follow an ideology and if you are following an ideology or a teacher or a certain way this medicine allows you to revisit it and see it for what it is and if you see holes in it, then you know that they are. This medicine can help you to revisit your thinking, your belief systems, your path, and help you see what really matters in your life. This medicine brings you here and now. And these are not just words, this is the fundamental experience of life, which is natural, but for some reason we don't experience that in a daily life. So this medicine brings you back to that point where you have an opportunity to touch the heart of existence.
that's the message I'm trying to get across. Uh, unfortunately, people confuse sacred medicine with drugs, when in reality sacred medicine is exactly what it is. It's medicine and it's sacred. Because it has the power to cure your soul. It has the power to give you your life back. It has the power to get you off addictions and drugs and alcohol and self-destructive behavior. So you use a sacred plant in order to become a better person and live your life easier and happier. Drugs is what you buy in the pharmacy and on the streets and they have a different function some of them are good some of them are bad and you know when you have a headache and you take an aspirin you just take in the drug but it's a good drug it just help you with the headache and just feel better but if you go on the street and buy heroin or cocaine well this is going to fry your brain eventually these are bad drugs but medicine is a whole another category. There is a teaching in it that is coming from somewhere. You can attribute it to the spirit of the plant, you can attribute it to the higher self, you can ascribe it to divine inspiration, and all of this is correct. But that's the essence of this work, is to come to that place within you which feels sacred, and you know it. And from that place, you see life as sacred. And this viewpoint in itself inspires and heals you, and makes you want to live a moral life. ancient world was shamanic. With the Christian era, shamanic traditions came under um, attack. Organized religion took over and turned this into a certain monopoly where you don't have a direct access to divine anymore. When in fact shamanic traditions base on that connection this medicine for me in particular is my direct access to divine and i'm not the only one who feels that way and this is not the only medicine that makes you feel that way so there was a big uh, confrontation between organized religion certain dominance and control over divinity with direct experience of it. Over the centuries, it just made illegal, suppressed, and eventually nearly forgotten. But you just cannot make nature illegal. You can try, but can you make those trees illegal? It's absurd. It's a ridiculous notion that we fall into believing. Nature is legal. And that is my main message. Not only nature is legal, nature is the cure that we need as humanity. So banning the cure, it's no less than a crime against humanity. Well, it depends on the depth that you have established here. If the connection you made is strong and deep, then you carry that home. You don't need to have medicine there. The connection that you make here with yourself, that feeling stays, and you take it back with you. 
and the insights of course and the understandings that you experience here these are yours to carry these are your gifts these are the gifts of the spirit so for example if you felt like you were not living your life fully or in the right way and there is certain things that has to change that this is how you stay connected to the medicine and to your vision and to the teaching you make the necessary changes that you have seen necessary here and by making them you create more happiness in your life you heal yourself and you get rid of self-destructive behaviors and toxic relationships and you know whatever that is on your path that has to be healed and taken care of but this is how you stay connected by following the guidance by making the changes that you have understood that are needed in your life and of course spending time in nature and silence and through this this experience will come through Well, our world is in crisis and if we don't come to our senses as humanity fairly soon we will have a world to wake up to. This medicine is the antidote for the madness we see in the world. This is the cure for personal stupidity and cultural. This medicine is the end of bullshit in your life. It makes you take your life seriously and live it consciously. I think it's time to wake up and revisit our values, relations and come back to nature where we came from. Nature holds the key to future. Nature that has now been destroyed we need to wake up and live life consciously when you are present when you are living the moment you appreciate it you understand that this life is all you have and this is the message you want to share with others so they can have the same appreciation for life and their kids and grandkids and that's how we evolve as humanity we transmit our knowledge to our kids and grandkids but in order to transmit something you have to have something so this medicine is the gateway to wisdom true wisdom comes from your heart Sergei's second book The Mescaline Confession Breaking Through the Walls of Delusion like his first book was endorsed by Graham Hancock, best-selling author, explorer, and unconventional thinker whom Sergei admires. It's a fantastic read for anyone who is interested in going beyond words by traveling to Peru to have a direct experience, or just to learn about Wachuma and its benefits. It delves into the way that we live as modern humans and offers a sound and profound cultural diagnosis while highlighting how plant-based shamanism is a very clear, direct solution to the personal and collective crises we face across the planet. It cuts to the heart of the matter, like a hot knife through butter. We are at a critical point in the history of humankind, and better decisions have to be made. The Wachuma Cactus is a healer, teacher, and an opportunity for self-growth. Besides the immense gratitude for being alive and tremendous joy that you'll experience with this medicine, it ultimately serves to make you aware of all the matters in your life and in our world today. 
Utilized properly, it can drastically help us to speed up the change-making process within our personal lives and, as a result, the collective life that we share here on this beautiful planet that we call Earth. To try to describe the Wachuma experience to someone who has never had it would be like trying to describe the colors of a rainbow to the blind or the symphonies of Mozart to the deaf. It has to be experienced to be known. What we can say for sure is that the medicine has the capacity to lift us above the dividing forces of politics, religion, racism, sexism, and all other divisions that obstruct unity among the people. It shows us that our similarities are greater than our differences, and that we all want the same thing, love and happiness. It brings us together as one human family and helps us to see one another with our hearts. Sergei has said he would like to require world leaders to undergo shamanic initiation with plant teachers before taking office so that these people can understand the value of human beings as opposed to corporate entities. If the Assembly of the United Nations could experience a Wachuma ceremony, it would truly help bring them unity and common sense, ensuring fair and just rulings, resulting in a peaceful world. But we cannot wait for this to happen. We need to wake up and realize that true change can only come through all of us working together right now. It is childish to assume that we have to transform physically into some kind of different species to achieve our evolutionary objective. We have, in fact, evolved perfectly in order to support an evolution of consciousness. The metamorphosis of a caterpillar is applicable to us only as a metaphor. For humans, the process of transformation is psychological. To establish a connection between our animalistic nature and our higher selves, to enjoy a fulfilling, satisfying, and harmonious life on this beautiful planet, and to pass it on for the next generation, is a cause worth living for. Vuela, vuela 
por el cielo azul Vuela por los campos de colores Viviendo el néctar de las flores Vuela, 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 tonquiri Vuela, 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 pica flor Vuela, 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 colibrí Vuela, 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 cuando vuela